I think for now this is going to be the final video in this dialogue series, so let's get right into it. We pretty much have everything set up, but we need to make more complex dialogue options, and I want to explore that a little bit with you guys. So, as you've seen in the previous videos, hopefully, uh, we have this dialogue tree now that can pick other dialogue trees to run based on some sort of information input. Obviously, right now, we're just incrementing an integer to, like, go through these. In a real scenario, you would have a quest or an inventory system to base all of this off of. Maybe you could even do this through a behavior tree that actually like, goes through and picks and then runs a state tree as a result of that. That's something that you can do. Because behavior trees are very good at just running through linearly and making a single choice. So that's maybe a situation where you can really combine behavior trees and state trees in a very cool way. But what I want to look at right now is these individual trees that we have here. So I'm just going to go back to using test tree 1 to uh, run on this. Because what I want to do is I want to add some more flexibility to these choices. Right now we just have something that makes a friendly choice, a hateful choice, and a confused choice. But what if we want to make these dependent on some kind of input? Right now all we have is just something that adds a choice gives us an output for that choice object with a name as an input. But what if we want to be able to gate those behind unlocking them? Well, that's actually remarkably uh, not that difficult. So the way that I like to do that is to find our create basic choice. You can make a copy of this or you can make a child blueprint of it. I'm going to go with child blueprint because that's technically better because if you end up adding anything to the base choice, it'll propagate to all the children. In this case, if you just want to make a copy of it, it effectively works the same way. So let's ch uh, create a child blueprint class and call this stt uh, friend based choice or something like that. And the reason that I say that it's effectively the same as just making a copy of it, if I press this button and open the blueprint editor for this, is because we're going to have to just kind of like redo all of this anyway in the on state enter. We're overriding all the code that it does to begin with. The only thing that we're getting here is easy access to the exact same variable names. So we still have the choice name, we still have the choice as an output. The only thing that we're going to be changing here is a can choose won't just be set to true always. What we're going to do here is we'll set a friendship value, which is going to be a float value, and that's going to be a input category. And then we'll also have a needed friendship or friendship threshold or whatever you want to call it and that's just going to be a simple exposed variable and we'll simply check if friendship value is greater than or equal to the needed friendship that we have and that's then going to go into our can choose for our basic choice object and it's really as simple as that we can use this for like hp checking again you can use this to check whether or not certain items are in the inventory so you unlock new Maybe like secret easter egg dialogue or whatever. Hey, so yeah, uh, during the editing I'm actually butting in here real quick because I realized that the way we did this is 99% alright and okay to do, but the fact that we're copying over those nodes into every single state tree task that we're doing to make one of these choice objects is a little bit weird. So the way that I would actually end up doing this is instead of making a new construct base choice object in every single one of the state tree tasks, which you very much still can do if at any point you decide, hey, I need to make a separate type of object that needs to hold specific other functions or specific other data or whatever. You still can just copy over this node and just change the class that you're constructing. But for 99% of the cases, this base object choice is going to be all that you're going to need. So what we can do instead is going back into the basic make choice and just create a function here and call that something like choice condition and that's going to have an output of just a bool parameter which we'll call condition as well. The default implementation of this is just going to be a return true but now we can run that function to choose whether or not we can choose this option and from here, it'll be as easy as going into our friendship choice, after we've compiled this, and now we can simply overwrite that choice condition. So, 
we can take all of this out of here. We don't need to redo enter state condition. We can just edit our choice condition. We don't need to call to the parent function for it anymore. We can just simply hook this up like this. And that'll make it a lot easier to make a bunch of different ones of these tasks because you don't have to go over copying a bunch of nodes every single time. It will just construct everything with the name and all that kind of stuff in the basic make choice. And the only thing that you have to edit is overriding the choice condition function that we just made in any of the child blueprints that we make. Because obviously I'm recording this after the fact, so you're going to see me doing the thing where I copy over this node and like do other weird stuff with it. But this is the much easier setup to scale up and actually work with long term. So let's add in one more secret option. Uh, that is add a new task. Now we can do the STT friend based choice, which we're going to put up above the choice picker because again i think it does these in chronological order and we have a, a friendship needed of 10 let's say and for now i'm just going to make a global parameter for our friendship that's the wrong thing global parameter for our friendship so that's just going to be floats um let, let's give it a new name as well let's call this friends and i'm going to set this to a value of a five for demonstration purposes so we'll use that global parameter as a check. Again, obviously, if you have like a friendship system, this would hook into that through either a direct reference to like your player character, some kind of component on that, maybe an interface call, whatever, really. And the choice name is I love you, marry me. If you have a friendship set of 10 with anybody, assuming that it goes up to like a scale of hundreds, uh, maybe don't say this. Anyway, uh, now we have this as a possibility and we can very easily just add this as a dialog option. Uh, so let's call this option four. And I'll show you a quick little uh, fun thing. We can replace this with a dialog with choice. So a pick choice and then just create a dialog with whatever face we want. Name is Mr. Gray or whatever. Text is please leave me alone. And then add a basic choice creator. And we'll just call this next. And that will effectively just make a next button with one dialogue option without us needing to make a dialogue table with one entry. Now, is making a dialogue table with one entry probably easier than doing this? Well, that's entirely up to you. But this should, by all accounts, just work. The only difference to keep in mind is that if you're doing this, you have to go use transition on events and then take your dialogue.choice event to do this with, and then we'll set this to uh, tree succeeded as well. Because of course the dialogue choices don't actually finish the states. Very much by design, I should add. So let's hook up the dialogue display here, and then we also needed to hook up one other thing that it's complaining about in the options, that makes sense. We create one option, and we use this one down here, I believe. Now we make a choice, so we add one more transition uh, to the bottom here. It's going to be on events, and again, event required. You know the drill by now, dialogue.choice, and that's going to transition to number four. And that'll have the condition of checking the dialogue choice, and we gave it a name, yeah, just friend based choice. So friend based choice, dot choice. And then in our choice picker, as the vinyl thing here, in the make choice, uh, the initial one that we have, we need to also add this choice to the array. Now, you're gonna notice that our friendship is at five and it needs to be at 10 for this thing to even show up. So if we now go ahead and play the game, you'll see that nothing is actually different like at all. We still have three choices, but if I set this friendship now to like 15, something 10 or greater, could have also just set it to 10, but hey, here we are. Going through, you will now see that we have a fourth option. It doesn't quite fit on screen, ignore that for the time being, but we can say, I love you, marry me. And then it says, please leave me alone. And again, you can see that the little trick that we did uh, worked. It's probably still just easier to make a singular line in a singular table, but I just wanted to show you that as a trick. So this now suddenly allows for really interesting, weird stuff, right? We can say, hey, when we 
exit this option, I want to increase my friendship. Or when we exit some option, right? We have like the friendly option, I think is option number one. Let's be friends, yeah? So this does three succeed. But maybe what this should do instead is it should transition us back to make choice. And we should add a new task. Let's make one real quick. Uh, STT increase friendship. When we enter any given state with this task on it, what we're going to do is we'll add a variable for the uh, property. And that will be of type property state tree property reference. Now, this is kind of a weird variable type. If you compile this, you can see that we can choose the type of property that we want to work with. So that's going to be a float in this case. Then we get the properties reference out of that, which gives us a reference to that type of property. And with that, we can just add a certain amount. So let's say we add five points whenever we do this. And then we set variable by reference to that new value. So now we have a task that effectively increases our friendship anytime we do it. So whenever we enter option one, we're going to add the task for increased friendship, which is one of these somewhere here. Yeah, there we go. Obviously, this does need to be a input or just exposed, but we're going to make it an input because it's actually like super relevant. And we're going to be updating our friendship parameter with that. Now, do be mindful that in any version under Unreal 5.5.4, this mechanism is broken and won't work in packaged builds. It'll actually just trash your game. So you do need to be on a fairly recent version of Unreal Engine in order to be able to set variables from your parameters in a dynamic way like this. But we'll see if we now talk to this guy our first time around, we're only going to have these three options. But if I say, hey, I want to be friends, it's going to loop back around and now our friendship status higher and it has unlocked our new option. I think you guys at this point kind of get the gist. You can effectively do this with whatever you want. Again, if you have an inventory system, you can do like query inventory and just provide that in to your can choose. If an item is in the inventory, an option might pop up. Otherwise, it's not going to pop up. If your friendship is higher than a certain amount, it's going to pop up. Otherwise not. If your health is under a certain amount, maybe you unlock a path that allows you to like get free healing items that way or something like that. You simply make a new state tree task for every type of check that you want to do and you just construct a basic choice and you decide can choose based on some type of comparison or querying or whatever. If you really need to do something super fancy, you can always make a chart blueprint as well of this basic choice. So let's call this um, friendship choice. For friendship, I don't think it's particularly needed and I don't really see a lot of situations where it would be needed. But you can make something where you um, add a new variable here. So let's say maybe we have, I don't know, the location of a certain actor for some reason is needed to do anything with in here. Again, I don't really see a lot of reasons that you would do this, but I just want you to show that it is possible. So if we then go back into uh, this one and we change this to uh, a friendship choice, it still will save out to the variable for the basic choice because friendship choice is a child class of the basic choice. And you can now get that location. I called it love by accident. That actually kind of makes sense for what we're talking about. And like do something with. Effectively, probably not going to be that relevant because any data that this thing has, you're going to be providing in yourself. So you might as well just do it out here. But if you have a bunch of different state tree tasks that can provide in data, then maybe the object can do something with that and output other data with that, run functions with that, do whatever you want. You can make different classes uh, to work with if you really need to. That's the magic of doing something as simple as making like these choice options, entirely object-based, because it does allow you to be flexible with adding inheritance-based hierarchies in your project structure. And a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member.
And of course, an extra massive thank you to my Cave Digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas, and my Cave Student tier supporters, Oiku and Earl Monsville Erno.